So hello, my name is Rebecca Brimfield. I am a paediatrician. Um, I've spent the last year as a Welsh Clinical Leadership Fellow working in Cardiff and Vale within medical education. We actually came to ASPE last year and since coming here have redesigned and restructured the way we're trying to run simulation within our hospital. So we've been actively recruiting and promoting simulation within Cardiff and Vale. We've been lucky enough to open a new simulated ward area and we're working out with our technicians to develop some more innovative programs um, and things that are used to the multidisciplinary team rather than just focusing on specific um, curriculum and task-based um, simulations. Because our new ward area is on site, it's provided a good opportunity to bring people together for shorter periods of time in an environment which can be made pretty similar to the ward environment that they're working on within Cardiff and Vale. It's got the same beds, the same equipment, the same monitors and things. So thank you for this opportunity to present just one of these projects. It was useful because it was run um, by the higher trainees and it was in response to a problem. So the trainees attending benefited from the simulation program within trauma orthopaedics, but also the trainees that were running it benefited from being able to design and lead simulation program within their own speciality. And trauma orthopaedics within our hospital does actually offer a local train the trainer course. So like I've said, this was in response and this program was developed in response to a problem. So in our hospital, the trauma orthopaedic regs are often in theatre and are quite stretched overnight or on long days. And the foundation trainees are therefore expected to be able to assess and start initial management on a wide variety of cases. And they often do this alone. So feedback from these foundation doctors was that they felt very unsupported in order to do this. They had rated the trauma orthopaedic jobs as part of their rotation, as part of the GMC survey, more negatively because of this lack of senior support. So the problem was twofold. The trainees were inexperienced in the management of trauma and orthopaedic patients, so not confident in their own basic skills, but also they felt unsupported and they were left to make decisions alone, which they felt were outside of their capabilities and they hadn't been trained to do. So this course was developed in order to address their concerns and provide them when they started the job with the basic skills that they can build on throughout the rotation. It also helped to provide a feeling of support that we were addressing concerns that trainees had raised rather than just giving them simulation and education programs just because we thought they'd be useful. And for the higher trainees, it also has given them more experience and kind of made them a bit more sensitive to the experiences of the foundation doctors on their team. So we developed a patient simulation pathway as part of a development, um, departmental induction, which was aiming to give a basic introduction to approaching trauma teach basic knowledge and deal with common orthopaedic emergencies, so improving patient, people's confidence with trainee um, patient management. So we gave a basic introduction, we gave basic knowledge to do with common emergencies, and we wanted to improve their confidence with patient management. So we focus on key skills, skills that they'd use in their trauma and orthopaedic jobs, but also skills that could be translated into their other rotations within the foundation year. We asked them to self-report confidence levels on a Likert scale pre and post simulation. And they were given some background reading at the start of their trauma and orthopaedic job, um, such as the ATLS algorithms um, and the BOS4 guidelines on managing open fractures. So this is a couple of pictures of what we actually did on the day. So it's an interactive patient session journey from a trauma call through to taking this patient to theatre. Ran over an afternoon and there was eight simulation sessions in total, which addressed the relevant competencies that we'd expect the foundation doctors to be able to initiate as part of their trauma and orthopaedic placements. So we started with an ATLS type scenario, um, which uh, was basically a pedestrian versus car being brought in by ambulance. So it was run initially as a simulation session with one candidate selected to lead the simulation and run through an ABCD approach of dealing problems as they arose as a standard simulation session would be run. This examination of the limb then revealed that the patient had an open fracture, had a pale foot, had a prolonged refill time, and there was difficulty palpating um, and assessing with Dopplers the pulses. So the candidates were then throughout the afternoon led through the management stages of this particular patient. So it was the same patient in every scenario. Station two was the practical station, um, and there you can see in the picture on the left there, um, one of our consultants teaching how to put on a back slab cast. I think the trainees enjoyed this quite a lot because they got to play with plaster casts and take it off of things. 
Then we also address some softer skills, so not just the patient management, but trainees were feeling intimidated about reporting to a registrar that was in theatre and that was busy. So we gave them a structure and practice with them the SBAR communications so that they can talk through the cases and their concerns that they had with their senior and also gave them a structure to talk through radiological images. So images that they may not be used that used to interpreting, we gave them a structure so that they could at least feel like they were some, saying something intelligent to their seniors when they're on the phone. Once they've done that, we'd um, decided and we told them that the patient needed to go to theatre. Um, and so we then tackled the consent and the preparation of that patient for theatre, which is actually what the foundation trainees would be expected to do. So the trauma and orthopaedic reg would be in theatre. They'd be expected to make sure that the patient was ready and make sure that everything was done. And we then did another fun practical station where we got them to screw um, with sore bones and practice the screwing. We wouldn't expect foundation doctors to be doing that, but we thought it'd be good experience so they could see what would happen. And then to complete that patient's journey, we offered um, suturing, so asking the trainees to um, suture up the wounds. So one of the main things within Cardiff and Vale we've been working on this year is feedback. And we were quite inspired here last year, um, and we have tried to adopt a more in-depth feedback than what we were doing a year ago. So a year ago, we were only literally looking at were people enjoying our courses? Did they find them relevant? Were they useful? Whereas now we're trying to actually say, is this a relevant training course? What can we do to improve the lives of our trainees? And are we actually doing that by delivering these simulation sessions? So these are two questionnaires that we did, a pre-course questionnaire and a post-course questionnaire. They're like at scales, one to five, um, we're asking trainees to self-rate their confidence levels in the different scenarios that we ran throughout the day. Um, we then attempted to get them to relate the course to their clinical um, jobs day to day by asking qualitative questions about reflecting asking them to reflect on a time where they'd encountered this in an actual situation, as opposed to just making it a hypothetical sim session. We then, in the post-course questionnaire, asked essentially the same question, but asked them to think of something that they would have done differently in that scenario, having had the teaching that they received during the course. So what did we find? So on this graph, the left-hand side is the pre-course questionnaire and the right-hand side is the post-course questionnaire. And as you can see in the pre-course questionnaire, there is a wider spread of um, answers from not at all confident to very confident um, in the middle. And you can see a shift um, on the post-course questionnaire. So more of the ratings are in the confident and very confident stage. And each different color represents a different um, simulation that um, occurred. So six out of those eight simulation sessions, so the significant increase in confidence from pre to post um, simulation. The two that didn't show an increase in confidence were their ABCD algorithm, because we asked them to rate their confidence in that. That's something that is used, it's not unique to trauma and orthopedics, it's used throughout medicine, it's drilled into in your medical career. So it's not surprising that they were already confident in managing that before they came to the sim session. And the other one was suturing, again, not a, it was a generic skill rather than a skill that's specific to trauma and orthopaedic. But more important than just the quantitative, what did they actually say? What did they want? So the trainees really loved this initiative. Um, it was run by trainees for trainees. It opened communication between the registrars and the foundation doctors and made them more accessible and more communicative. They felt it was really interactive. They felt they learned a lot and they felt better equipped when they left that session to manage the patients that they were expected to manage um, confidently and on their own. They felt that it was relevant to their day-to-day -day lives and they felt that it should be included more routinely in the induction. So just to conclude and bring this back to our original learning objectives, we wanted to give a basic introduction to approaching trauma. We didn't want to make these um, foundation trainees trauma and orthopaedic surgeons. We just wanted to make them confident in what we expected to do um, when the registrar was in theatre or not available. We gave them basic knowledge to deal with common orthopaedic emergencies, and we aim to improve their confidence in their patient management skills. And we've shown through qualitative and quantitative measures that we have been able to achieve these. So there's obvious limitations to this project. So while I stated at the beginning, we're focusing on multidisciplinary teams and moving our simulation to multidisciplinary and short, um, widespread um, actions, this is obviously only for foundation doctors. We didn't include the um, nursing teams on the ward in, as part of this, but it is something that we could look at doing in the future. And with the feedback, we haven't been able to collect a delayed feedback um, later on in the course to see whether they still felt three months later that there was an increase in their confidence and they felt this course was useful. But we're hoping that the GMC survey, um, when that's taken, there'd be a reflection in that, that people felt more supported and felt that they were given more teaching within trauma and orthopaedics. 
And we've got plans to develop this teaching program. So rather than just re running one scenario right at the very beginning for every um, set of trainees that come through, having a more regular patient simulated story that's run on a regular basis for the trauma and orthopedic trainees, um, covering things like complications post-operatively um, and orthopedic ward reviews, which is other skills that they would be expected to know. Thank you very much for listening.